Adaptable, quick, and agile, roadrunners are one of the superheroes of the desert. Their cute crests, long-pointed tails, and penchant for running distinguishes them from so many other birds. They have secured their place among the lore of indigenous peoples, claimed the title of numerous businesses, and even that of state bird. This bird just simply cannot be overlooked. It may come as a surprise, but the greater roadrunner is part of the cuckoo family. Their scientific name is Geococcyx californianus, which means Californian earth cuckoo. They are also known as the chaparral cock, the ground cuckoo, and the snake killer. These non-migrating birds make their home in the southwestern United States and Mexico. In more recent years, their range has expanded east, edging into southern Missouri, Arkansas, and Louisiana, and farther north into the northern Sacramento Valley of California. The species most similar looking to the greater roadrunner is the lesser roadrunner, found in parts of Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Central America. The lesser roadrunner is about two-thirds the size of the greater roadrunner with a bright blue eye ring. These birds are well-equipped with some unique tools to thrive in a harsh desert climate. Roadrunners have zygodactyl feet. This means that they have two toes in front and two toes in the back, making an X shape. This unique footprint was considered sacred to some Native American tribes. It was thought to ward off evil, as it's unclear which direction the bird is going, thus confusing spirits with ill intent. Parrots, woodpeckers, and all other birds in the cuckoo family have this toe arrangement. Zygodactylus feet gives them a high degree of dexterity to grasp food, but more importantly for the roadrunner, it is especially useful for walking and running on the ground. For comparison, most birds have three toes on the front and one in back, which is better for perching. The roadrunner makes its home in dry, barren desert habitat full of sagebrush, cactus, and juniper trees. With little rainfall and no pond or river in sight, how does it get water from such a harsh environment? Well, they get water from the blood and tissue of their prey. They release excess salt from their high-protein diet through special glands located near their eyes. This way, they conserve precious water and still maintain body chemistry. This is similar to seabirds who drink salt water, but is far less common of land birds. They can also reabsorb excess water from their feces back into their body instead of excreting it. The roadrunner is an omnivore, and although it will occasionally eat plant material, they do like their meat. Conveniently, their environment is rich in their favorite sources of protein, such as insects, lizards, small rodents, snakes, birds, and bird eggs. Whether big or small, long or short, anything is fair game for a roadrunner, as long as it can be subdued. They can jump straight up into the air to catch low-flying insects, bats, and birds. They have even been known to stalk hummingbirds at feeders. They are bold and fierce predators, seemingly unafraid of taking on larger and even venomous prey. Scorpions are no problem, as well as tarantulas and rattlesnakes. In order to capture a rattlesnake, they have to provoke it to strike first. This is usually accomplished by kicking or holding their wings out to bait the snake. Once the snake moves to strike, the bird reacts with lightning-fast speed and precision to grasp the snake's head and bypass the fangs. While they are certainly at risk of getting bitten, they are unaffected by the venom when the snake is ingested. Whether capturing a snake or a mouse, they repeatedly strike their prey on the ground to break its spine, making it easier to consume. Prey is swallowed whole, and if that means that the tail is sticking out of its mouth for a couple of hours while another portion is being digested, then so be it. Roadrunners are year-round residents. You won't see groups of roadrunners racing to southern Texas or Mexico when winter comes around. So to deal with the cold temperatures, they go into torpor every night, slowing down their heart rate, respiration, metabolic functions, and lowering their body temperature 20 to 30 degrees. In the mornings, they can be seen sunning themselves to warm back up. They put their backs to the sun, let their wings droop, and fluff up their back feathers to expose their black skin to the sun's rays. Black skin is able to absorb 25% more heat than white skin. 
they may do this multiple times through the day as an energy-efficient way to stay warm. Yes, roadrunners can fly, though they much prefer to walk or run, as this is where they are the most powerful. Their short, rounded wings allow them to fly and glide short distances, though rather awkwardly. They can be found perched in trees, sitting on retaining walls, or on top of houses. But they were born to run, and are able to reach speeds of up to 20 miles per hour. Their stride goes from 6 to 8 inches when walking, to a whopping 19 to 20 inches when running. This bodes well for the road runner, as most of their food is terrestrial, rather than airborne. When they do run, they lean forward, holding their slender and sleek bodies parallel to the ground and making themselves more aerodynamic. Their long tails act like a rudder, helping them to steer, break, and balance. The bare patch of skin around the roadrunner's eyes is known as the post-orbital apteria. This featherless area is useful for communicating different emotional states. When the bird is more relaxed, the patch is mostly covered up by the surrounding feathers. When in a state of heightened alertness, the feathers are pulled back, exposing the skin and its bright colors of cobalt blue white, and red-orange. This is used when defending its territory from another roadrunner, or when confronting a venomous snake, the message being that it is not to be messed with. Sometimes they expose the colors when they are vocalizing, or during courtship displays. The crest works in a similar fashion and is a tool of communication. A crest flattened to the head indicates a relaxed and content bird, whereas an upright crest may indicate excitement or inquisitiveness. Male and female roadrunners look the same. They pair for life, each year performing courting rituals to reaffirm their bond. In order for the male to get the girl, however, he needs to bring her a gift. Otherwise, she will not mate with him. It can't just be any gift, either. An offering of sticks and leaves for a nest is not sufficient. Instead, he needs to bring her an actual vertebrate animal to win her over. This shows her that he can provide quality nutrition for her and eventually for their young. He holds the prey in his bill and hops onto her back to mate, and afterward she gets the gift. He then hops around her bowing his head, flicking his tail, and making a cooing sound. Roadrunners build their nests in thorny shrubs, cactus, or small trees, about 3 to 10 feet off the ground. They prefer the center of the plant, where they will be the most concealed and hard to reach. The male brings nesting material to the female, and she builds the nest. Five eggs is a pretty typical clutch size, and they will have one or two broods per year. Both the male and female incubate the eggs. They make various coos, whirs, and bill-clacking sounds to defend their territory, locate each other, or to warn of predators. The eggs hatch asynchronistically, meaning one egg hatches every couple of days, so there are significant differences between the size of the chicks. It can be difficult for the parents to catch enough prey to feed a brood of hungry chicks, and competition in the nest is high. As a result, infanticide and suicide are common. While this sounds cruel to us, it is nature's way of making sure that at least some survive, rather than none. These birds are bold and brash. They adapt to humans quite well, and are often successful at intimidating house cats. At least the adult roadrunners are. It's the younger ones that are the most vulnerable. Other predators they watch out for are hawks, raccoons, skunks, and of course, coyotes. Do you have the roadrunner where you live? Or have you ever seen one when traveling in their range? What was the most interesting fact that stood out to you? Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.